This is Elizabeth Maxwell, voice of Major and Ghost in the Shell Arise, and you are watching Three Black Geeks. CJ here at Oldercon 2019, and I am here with Elizabeth Maxwell. How's it going, man? Wonderful. I'm really enjoying myself. <laughs> so, um, this is kind of the biggie here. You're voicing the Major from Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. How huge was that? I mean, that's, that's a very important role. That's a character that is like the lifeblood of anime. If you mention anime, Ghost in the Shell, off the break. So how was it when they was like, hey, you're doing major? Utterly nerve-wracking. Because, <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, there were so many elements. It was my third ever anime role, um, first lead. And... I mean, personally, I, I grew up watching Ghost in the Shell. Um, the first movie was the first anime I ever saw. Yeah. So, you know, it was like I walked into it personally being a fan and then professionally having the awareness of, like, what an iconic franchise it was, what an iconic actress Mary Elizabeth McGlynn is. I mean, she is major, you know. Um, so... I was freaked out, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but, you know, I was really lucky. Like, the director I worked with on that, Zach Bolton, he was, like, so, like, encouraging and, like, so grounding and just kept reminding me, like, this is a different incarnation. Like, you know, just give it your own spin. And uh, that's what I tried to focus on. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you mentioned the whole thing of putting a spin on the character and stuff. Now, was it kind of a case of they want you to do the kind of like, not necessarily a 180? Because I'm you know, watching a rise. It's like, oh, there's semblance of the major there. It's not like a huge 180. So was that kind of like the direction that they wanted you to go in? Well, you know, I mean, it's pretty spelled out in the anime that basically what you're seeing is kind of like, I mean, I know cyborgs don't really quote unquote age, yeah. but it's kind of almost like a teenage version of major. You know, it's like we see her before she's become like the fully competent, yeah, competent, capable, established woman that she is in the later series. So, I mean, I think it's kind of cool that we get to see her when she's doesn't play quite so well with yeah. others yet. <laughs> and, you know, she doesn't quite know what she's doing or what direction she's heading in. So there's like just a little bit of that like, teenage angst in a cyborg's body. <laughs> Speaking of teenage angst, um, you voice uh, Ymir in Attack on Titan. Now, that is probably one of the most stressful shows to watch because at any point in time, anybody dies. Any episode, like first season I remember watching it and I was like, okay, I like this character and they're dead. <laughs> so for your character, were you kind of like nervous? Like, oh man, I hope he doesn't die. Or were you kind of like, all right, I'm just going to play it and just see how it goes. Well, you know... Um, Without spoiling things, because, you know, I know some people probably haven't seen past it. You right. Know. Well, I will say that, for me, the fate of my character was spoiled for me by a bit of a zealous fan who, like, came up to me at my very first convention ever and was just like, oh my gosh, can you believe that blah, 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 blah happens? And I was like... No. <laughs> so uh, after we finished season one, after that, I basically knew like what happened with her. Okay, so um, did that change up how you kind of voiced it, or did you already just like, all right, I'm just going to stay the course? And... Yeah, I mean, I try not to let, like anything that the character doesn't know, I really try to not let that influence my performance because you want to stay as realistic to the character's mindset as possible. So. Yeah, when you were approached for that show and stuff, I mean, out of you know, all the shows that you've done and stuff, was that kind of like, I mean, pretty sure you've watched the actual, you know, Attack on Titans and stuff, but like, was that one of those shows that probably like a lot of folks, you just like everything that happens, the destruction and the deaths and stuff, I mean, were you at all expecting that jump joining in? No, well, first of all, believe it or not, Attack on Titan was my very first anime dubbing okay. role. Okay. Yeah, like that was the first time I ever auditioned for Funimation, first time I got hired by them. Yeah, so I wasn't very familiar with the show before I was cast. And it's funny because I actually was like driving, I live in Austin, which is, you know, like a three and a half, four hour drive from Dallas. And I was driving up to Dallas for the audition. Um, it was very last minute. And I called up my friend who's well-versed in anime. And I was like, hey, 
I'm auditioning for this show called Attack on Titan. I need you to like give me the rundown. So I kind of have like a bit of a backstory. I know what I'm talking about. And he was like, say what did you, what are you auditioning for? And his reaction, he got like so excited and so freaked out that I was like, actually, I regret this. Let's get off the phone. Don't tell me anything. You're gonna like totally like, I, I don't wanna be infected by your, like it's gonna be too big a stakes if I listen to you. Um, so I didn't know anything about it. Uh, and, and that being the case, I was like super surprised by quite like how graphic and violent the show is. Like, I remember watching that first episode and just being like, oh! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I actually had to, I used to watch the show like at night, like, bef you know, after dinner, before I'd go to bed, I had to cut that, that out because I was having nightmares. <laughs> so uh, you voice what I dubbed the, uh, the Burly Twins in DBZ Super. <laughs> yeah. um, and they have you doing both voices. Shaq and, oh, oh I, thought, I thought it was both voices. Uh, wow, because no. it sounds almost similar a little bit. That's why I was like, so, so you're not doing both. No, I'm Cauliflower. Oh, okay, okay. Don Bennett is Kale. And then we do Kefla together. That's probably where, yeah. okay, all right, all right. So, I mean, incredible franchise, yeah. obviously, and stuff. So they had you voicing that character, what was it like? Especially yeah. with both of y'all two, like, once y'all fused together. How did, actually, I should ask that. How is that kind of voice acting experience with both of y'all kind of like having to play the fused characters? Together? It's hard. <laughs> I mean, it's really fun, but it's actually quite hard because matching somebody's performance and cadence is way more difficult than it might appear. Yeah, and yeah, and so basically like we kind of like we take turns on who goes first. Um, and that kind of, you know, that person has to kind of like set the tone for, okay, what is like a fusion of Caulifla and Kale's like reactions going to be? So they kind of like, you know, set the groundwork and then the second person comes in and has to like match their performance as closely as possible. So both jobs are hard in different ways. And then, you know, they have ways like with post-production and, and plugins and stuff of like kind of cleaning everything up and like, you know, we have to sync as closely as possible and then they'll like run it through programs and systems that I don't understand um, to like, you know, make it as clean as humanly possible. Um, but it's, it's really fun, but it actually is a lot harder than people realize. Yeah, I mean, that whole arc in Dragon Ball was just crazy and stuff, especially with you guys. Um, so and it's funny too, because a lot of people think that it's the dialogue that's the hardest yeah. and it's not like, it's the uh, nonverbal kind of like fighting uh, stuff, oh. you know, where it's like you're having to like match someone's like exertion grunts or like, ha, yeah, like that stuff or like laughter is so hard to copy somebody. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess lastly, um, I'm pretty sure everybody in here has NDA levels of like they can't say much. So do you have anything? anything upcoming that you're voicing outside of attack on titan of course i mean uh, yeah there's like i mean i'm i'm in a couple of animes at the moment um you know arisa uotani and fruits basket um but other than that i mean i have a couple of games that will be coming out eventually i can't say anything about them um but the only thing i can kind of like partially mention is that if there are any rooster teeth fans watching this um I was a, a lead character in um, a show that they put out called Nomad of Nowhere. And one of the creators of that show, Jordan Whitman, he um, broke off and started his own animation studio called Portside Studios. And he is in the middle of making a show called Port by the Sea. And I'm not allowed to get specific about how I'm involved, but I can say that I'm involved. So you can follow Jordan or Portside Studios on social media if you want to keep up with that or me i'll post about it too <laughs> yeah gotcha. but um appreciate you taking time to talk to us absolutely so, yeah take it easy okay. Peace. Oh, 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 oh i don't know <laughs> <laughs>